Hikes boys. Hikes boys. We're back at you with another uh, trail talk. It, trail talk video. Yes. And uh, Today, so today's subject is hygiene. Hygiene. Big, big one. Important one. <clears throat> useful one. And we're gonna and start out with the uh, the mouth. So what I got here in my hand is a travel yes. size uh, toothpaste, and then a travel size modified toothbrush. And I got a regular toothbrush. So as you can see, uh, it's a lot shorter. What I did with mine is I cut mine because I thought I was really cool and ultralight. And in reality, I mean, it doesn't really do much. It's probably saved a couple grams. Um, but ultralightists will tell you to cut your toothbrush and make it an ultralight toothbrush. You can buy a travel size toothbrush, which right. basically is like yeah, that. This size. Um, ultralighter, they'll snip it off right here at the head and you'll just have this little thing. You little nub. <laughs> and this is a, uh, it's a travel toothpaste. 24 gram uh, toothpaste. And we use this. Last the whole trail, almost. Yeah, just one. So, some things to talk about. If you brush your teeth now, you probably should keep brushing your teeth on the trail. Um, we did was basically one time at night, and that was with toothpaste. And the amount of toothpaste you use is like you would normally, a little ball. Well, I mean, yes, you could just dig a hole and put your toothpaste in it, should, your spit we, on we it. Did we did that. We did that a few times. Or we just kicked some dirt over it, really, but it's toothpaste. Yeah, and um, you're not using a lot. It's microscopic right. so, um but honestly brush your teeth at least yeah. once a day flossing something we did not do a lot uh, i did have floss picks in my pack uh and i used those basically if i was eating like a meat or i felt like something was stuck in my tooth between my teeth and if i was in town i was more likely to use them uh, if you're using regular floss make sure you pack it out but flossing's kind of like low not vital yeah. thing. I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, if you floss in general regularly, then you're probably going to keep doing it because you have it. So yeah. obviously do whatever you do when you're regularly at home. If you brush twice a day, brush twice a day. Twice a day. If you floss, same thing. But, um, but it's at least do it once a day. If you don't brush your teeth, you should, you know, at least try to just brush your teeth once a day. <laughs> That's probably, it'll probably help you out a little bit. But yeah. yeah, it's brushing your teeth. Yeah, like I said, you don't really need to be ultralight. What I, what I would do Travel size toothpaste, solo hiker, you should have no problem making that last. Uh, bring a regular toothbrush, just the mm. cheapo one, and you'll be good. Yeah. Your teeth will be happy. 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 Not brushing your teeth for six months is not a good you'll idea. You'll probably look like, um, you look, I don't even know, <laughs> Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> you probably look like Dennis who has no teeth. So moving on, so that's mouth hygiene. Next week up we have is basically your body hygiene bathing and what um, i got here is a lifesaver yeah so this is a replica of our appalachian trail microfiber cloth you probably don't recognize it because ours was green but, but same thing multi-purpose literally we used it for almost everything you could think of when it came it's a to great you. investment definitely something you should buy before you hit the trail um, um and this cost probably a couple bucks not in a trail store but if you buy it like at walmart or you know a dollar store they sell these and this yeah. is you yeah. literally for everything we used it for definitely for cleaning our body which we're talking about now hygiene so yeah for bathing if you do so you're going to come up on water sources at anywhere you stay if it's a shallow stream use a cloth go downstream of where a bit like if you know where people get water go downstream of that you can kind of splash in the water you don't need soap use a cloth Splash the water yourself, rinse off the sweat. You're probably going to be using this most during the summer months because that's when you're going to get the most sweaty. Right. So, like, for us, it was mainly between when we got back on the trail. We bought our first microfiber cloth was Fontana Dam. That was after Zach's leg injury, so that was May till August. We were basically bathing every day. Right. But, yeah, think about that. You're going to be bathing downstream of where people get water. Or if you are at a spot where it's um, basically you can't bathe, there's no stream we use the catadine thing behind me we'd use the catadine splashers basically a shower yeah, we got 10 liters of water shower, dumping yeah, over us um, which is nice I, I mean i liked it it was yeah. <sighs> shocked you i mean but, uh yeah basically the basically the point of all that was just to get the sweat off our bodies after yeah. a long day of hiking and honestly, because going in your sleeping bag sweaty, that some people don't like that yeah. feel. We didn't like that feeling. We don't that, like that feeling. I know most sweaty, people out there. Sweaty, nasty, that, ball sacky feeling. It's like that sticky feel. Like if you don't have air conditioning, it's a hot, humid day. Yeah. You're sticky. You're like, oh, this sucks. 
Same exact thing happens when you've been sweating all day and you try to slide into a sleeping bag. Yeah. It doesn't like, feel... It's not I, comfortable. You won't fall asleep fast. If that turns you on, go for it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so bathing. So the other thing is if you don't have a cat and I, you can always use a plastic bag to scoop water. Yeah. Another or your th- Sawyer bags. Or your Sawyer bags. They're smaller, but they do work. You have 32 ounces. We use them quite a bit. We, we actually use them. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, use the Sawyer, top. but we just fill them up top. in the stream and then we just dump it over. We use a cloth. There. We kind of like dump water in the cloth you like, or then you drip it. But the key thing is, we didn't use soap or shampoo. We, right. weren't, we weren't taking you don't a shower. Need that. We're just yeah. We're just rinsing off. Yeah. So this is all for the trail. We don't need that stuff. People actually talk about not using soap at all. If you are going to use soap, don't do it in a water source, and right. make sure it's the biodegradable special right. hiking soap. Yes. Yeah. So you don't want to be bringing your regular soap that you use from home and washing yourself. Especially like especially in, in the water source too. Yeah, like, especially if you're within sight of other people, don't be doing that. Yeah, um, people people won't like that. It's kind of like peeing in the water source. <laughs> right. And uh, I guess going along with washing yourself is your clothes. Uh, a lot of people have an extra set of clothes. They they call camp clothes or town clothes. And those are clothes for when you're done hiking during the day, you change into those clothes, yeah. and then you just go to bed in those clothes and you know hang around camp. In so those clothes. that's kind of the plus of bathing <clears throat> is. You you rip off those sticky nasty clothes. You rinse off the nasty sweat. You put on these semi like these clean clo- clean clothes, and you're not getting those nasty. And then you slip in the bed, and it's like, ah, oh, this is nice. Right. I mean, you and know. clean clothes are just you know just makes you feel better. Yeah. Um, you don't want to be sleeping again in your sweaty stinky clothes in your somewhat clean sleeping bag. Um, that's why you have the camp clothes for. Yeah. If you do sit through like the if you start northbound, the get little the guy there actually talks about stuff like that. He'll right. tell you to make sure you have some camp clothes and some town clothes. Try to keep that stink off you. Right. Um, um, yeah. Especially but, if you're going to hitchhike, you know, obviously you, you got to do what you got to do to hitchhike. But, you know, somebody's still a little bit nicer if you smell a little bit better. Yeah. Um, so think about it. And um, I guess, if you're going into town, town days, you should be bathing. Yeah, town days should be bathing. And then kind of flowing into that town days, you should probably be washing your clothes. Zach and I actually washed our clothes on the trail with just the rinse and wring out. You know, when you're wringing the clothes out, you can kind of tell when they're clean. When the color of the water turns clear, you know that most of the dirt and nastiness has been uh, gone. But we like to wash our clothes when we went to town. Right. Um, and that's just, that's, that's simply just going to a laundromat. Laundromats and... are nice. They have, you can buy just a single pod. If you have friends on the trail, you can kind of group together, do a large load at once. Save your money. It costs you like 50 cents to wash your clothes right. or something. Then also, you're saying at a hostel, they usually have showers you can use for free. Um, they probably have soap there too. I so think that one really shelter, good. the shelf that we stayed at, or you stayed at really, they had that, um, you that took a nice. shower, then everyone had their clothes drying out in the side. Yeah, they had everything. racks outside. You can wash everything. That's right. actually, that's where we washed our packs, which is something you probably don't think about washing the most. Probably your shoes and your pack, you don't think about washing those at all, but your pack gets pretty nasty. Right. You know your shoes do. Your shoes get really nasty, but right. your pack is just as nasty because the straps, they have the foam and the cloth, and they don't really get rinsed, and all that sweat during the summer month, makes it smell. Right. Your pack will stink the most. Yeah, and that's so. all you don't have to do is every time. This is maybe like a couple times one, during the trail, yeah. or once at least. So and really do. take advantage of your zero days and like those really nice sunny days. You know, right. If you think you're taking a zero, you know it's going to be a beautiful day, think about washing, rinsing out all your clothes, rinsing off everything, and hanging out to dry. Right. Um, and then... Um, it's nice. Yeah. Just Yeah, and then I guess we on top of that, you, if you see a stream, river, lake, or whatever on the trail... Jump in there if you want, and you'll do a nice little bath, quick clean it that way. Yeah, uh, we did that quite a bit when it kind of a big open stream. We had some videos way. you can see us splashing around, yeah, the screaming water. and and being all excited. You know, <laughs> we had a blast in the in the lakes. Yeah, um, I mean sometimes we even jumped in with everything on because we we're just like it was a nasty hot day. I just want to dive in. Nothing and, better than going swimming. And then you use your shirt to kind of rinse the mud off. Right. Um, um, so yeah, think about that just from like body hygiene too. You know. If you're all sweaty and nasty all day and you're getting like pimples on your back or pimples on your body, you get cuts in your legs, if you're not cleaning off the sweat and stuff, you're more likely right. f- prone to infection. Yeah, so. if you're prone to infection in general, then you should probably be, you know, bringing either baby wipes or at least hand sanitizer or something to yeah. clean the... My mom gave me baby wipes at the end and those actually work well if you don't have time to bathe. You can actually yeah. use a baby wipe to actually clean your sweat off your body and then you pack them out. Yeah, pack them out, yeah. Pack those things out. But and then, Baby wipes actually work really well. Right. Um, and then, yeah, hand sanitizer, hit on that. You should probably bring that. Definitely, definitely bring, bring hands the little travel size. They have little hooks. You can hook them to your sack. Um, and they're great for if you want to, if you're a privy person, 
you're going to be wanting hand sanitizer. Yeah. If those do not have hand sanitizer in them, then you're going to want to use those after every time. Those doors are nasty. The, every, the whole place is disgusting. Yeah. So And then kind of on the same thing as nasty. Um, yeah, so you want to be using the hand sanitizer. But then also think, you're trying to be more hygienic. Don't think about taking food from others. Right, yeah. You don't know how clean they are. So if someone gives you open food, like from their hand, polite, you know, be politeful and say, oh, no, thank you, man. I yeah. get my own stuff. Yeah, you don't want to, yeah, that's a big thing. You don't want to yeah. be, if someone offers you food, like you said, and you don't, because you don't know what, what their history of their, you yeah. know, whatever they had on their hands. They was, probably look dirty. You know, look dirty. Like, and, you know, <laughs> someone gives you M&Ms from their hand. Yeah, I wouldn't, I'd stay away from that. But that's yeah. just me. I it's wanna... close, like it's a, like a granola <coughs> bar or candy bar in the original wrapper. Probably all right. It's fine. You know, you're going to take that out and you're going to eat that. Yeah. But, but, yeah, just small, small food that people like to share, which is nice. I mean, I, mean, I know they're trying to be nice, you but, know, nothing against them, but they're probably filthy. Right. So, so you should be cognizant of those, uh, of where those hands have been. I know a lot of people at Trail Magic will actually have hand sanitizer. Yeah, and if right. they're really watching, they'll be like, make sure you use the hand yeah, sanitizer yeah, that's, first. That's a good point, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Trail Magic, you'll see hand sanitizer everywhere, actually. Yeah. That one person actually told us before we even went, make sure you wash your hands. Yeah. And we washed our hands, the hand sanitizer. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, they'll, they'll want you to be hygienic. And you should also be thinking about that <clears> while you're hiking. Don't just try to be a nasty trail trash person. Even though you're out there in the wild, still there's a sense of, you know, try to be kind of clean yeah. for your, you know, for peers. And then hitchhike if you're hitchhiking, you know, you don't want to be that nasty person spreading disease through someone's car. Right. You know? so just something to think about. It's, yeah. uh, you know, hygiene is pretty basic. We all think about it. We all do it every day. And on the trail, it's not really anything different. Yeah. Don't think of it as cheating by bathing. Bathing is a, is a necessity all animals bathe right. so don't think you have like you're losing part of the trail experience by washing yourself i think washing is part of it right. so so yeah and that's just what we did so yeah. so yeah we were a little different because we were basically bathing every day but that's just because you know we, we, we didn't like that we could. we could and we yeah. just didn't yeah. like some people were definitely envious envious of us when we were at a site and we had the cat and I spraying water on their bodies like oh that's a good idea yeah we're like yeah well we're different. We're traveling as a pair, so it made yeah. more sense. Yeah. So obviously, you're gonna be doing whatever you see fit. Um, this is our recommendation. This is what, how we did it. Um, yeah. But obviously, brush your teeth. Hopefully. Yeah. Hands, so the big heavy hitters there: hand sanitizer, microfiber cloth, toothpaste, toothbrush. Basic four right there. We think are definitely good to have um, when you're out there.